Welcome to this unit on ecosystem-based tools for disaster risk reduction. The past unit has given you an overview on spatial planning and community-based tools in general. Now, let us take a look at specific management tools for certain areas or ecosystems. The guiding questions of this unit are, what are the main management tools and approaches for EcoDRR? And how do such tools work? We will answer the second question by using one of the tools as example, the Integrated Water Resource Management or IWRM. Besides IWRM, other tools that can serve for EcoDRR are Integrated Coastal Zone Management, Protected Areas, Integrated Fire Management and Sustainable Land Management. Most of the tools and approaches presented here are found in the context of natural resources management. They are appropriate and can be very effective for reducing disaster risks. However, their link with disaster risk reduction is not commonly made, as disaster managers do not always consider the role of ecosystem in reducing disaster risk. But let us take a brief look at them, as proposed in the first guiding question. Integrated coastal zone management is a multidisciplinary approach to manage the coastal zone, including planning, resources management, information bases, and community involvement. It is a natural resource management tool, which is increasingly including risk considerations by adjusting planning and management of resources and people to reduce coastal risks. Coastal zone management is of growing importance as a large share of the global population is living in coastal areas, often at risk through sea level rise or storm surges. On a local scale, EcoDRR measures like mangrove replantation or protection of sand dunes as natural buffers are of growing importance. The aim of integrated fire management is to balance the beneficial and negative effects of fire on the natural environment and socio-economic development in a given landscape or region, and to reduce risk of wildfire disasters that threaten human life and ecosystem functions. Examples of ecosystem approaches are the inclusion of fire and drought tolerant species, and to increase biological diversity in order to accelerate regrowth after a fire. A protected area is a clearly defined geographical space recognized, dedicated and managed through legal or other effective means to achieve the long-term conservation of nature with associated ecosystem services and cultural values. Protected areas are increasingly including disaster risk reduction and adaptation goals in their management plans. Sustainable land management includes management practices in agriculture and forestry aiming at sustaining ecosystem services and livelihoods. Agroforestry systems, for instance, combine agricultural and forestry practices to create productive and at the same time healthy and resilient land use systems. Like many other sector policies, the concept of Integrated Water Resource Management, or IWRM, results from the recognition that water resources management is closely linked to other sectors like agriculture and forestry, energy or urban planning. Taking IWRM as an example, let us now answer our second guiding question. How do these tools work and how can EcoDRR be integrated? We will focus on IWRM as it is one of the most common tools and water-related disasters are what affect most people around the globe. IWRM is typically implemented at the watershed level. It aims at the comprehensive management of the whole water cycle, including headwaters and coastal areas surface and groundwater, water quality and quantity, harmonizing demands from different water users in order to maximize social welfare without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. IWRM can and should include linkages to EcoDR, in particular to water-related disasters like floods and droughts, which are known to be associated with very high losses and damages. Let us have a closer look at the linkages of the water cycle to floods and droughts. Strong rainfall events create surface runoff causing downstream inundations. Prolonged droughts diminish water available to agriculture, people and ecosystems 
in soil and groundwater. How can IWM mitigate these situations? Storage has been a pivotal management option for centuries to mitigate the impact of climate variability. It helps to control flood peaks and provides a water reserve for drought periods. The way we manage ecosystems within our watersheds can be decisive in offering storage solutions, which are an alternative or an addition to building large reservoirs. In any catchment, water is stored naturally in soils, in wetlands and in aquifers. We need to use ecosystem functions, which help us to increase water storage in different ways and different scales. Manage landscape through, for example, contour trenches and bunds to support rainwater harvesting. Manage soils to increase infiltration and improve soil water storage, for example, through mulching and augmenting soil porosity. Manage vegetation to intercept rainwater and to support depercolation of water, for example, through reforestation or introduction of agroforestry systems. Other ecosystem-based options to curb inundation risk include measures which control storage or drainage within the floodplain, including considerations of density of riparian vegetation or adjustments of river morphology. These measures combined help to reduce peak surface runoff and with that inundation risk. At the same time, they help to increase stored groundwater, often the last resort in prolonged droughts. To conclude, proper IWRM includes integrated flood management and integrated drought management, in which ecosystem-based approaches should play a central role. Infiltrating excess rainfall by proper watershed management practice is an excellent example of IWRM mitigating floods and droughts at the same time. Coming to an end of this unit, let's summarize the main points. The presented tools and approaches are not new and have been the mainstay of natural resources management for decades. What is emerging is a greater emphasis on combining risk reduction with natural resources management. Such ecosystem-based approaches, combined with more classical disaster risk reduction actions, such as early warning, preparedness and risk mapping, are proving more effective and sustainable in terms of reducing risks and saving lives. I hope you have enjoyed this unit. In the complementary materials, we will provide you with more information and how different tools are applied.